Welcome back, Last Man in Podcast, episode 60, Josie Theodore. So this entire episode is just going to talk about goalies who are MVPs for the Montreal Canadiens. So Josie Theodore, Terry Price, Ken Dryden, and probably a lot of others too. Patrick Waugh. <laughs> As if you left Patrick Waugh, oh, Greg, come on. I don't know. I, uh, I, I, just to fill everyone in. It shows you how many good goalies played for Montreal over their lifetime. All of them. All of them, that's why. They have all the good ones. And, like, remember... I don't think, I don't think Toronto has had an all-star goalie since maybe, like, Johnny Bauer or Tim Horton. Like, Curtis Joseph was good, but he was never an NH, uh, NHL, um, like, MVP goalie. Um, Detroit, like, if you think about all the original six teams, I don't think any of them have had... Um, an all-star goalie? goalie? But I don't think Lundqvist has won, like, league MVP. I think... Hold on. Okay, well, I have a computer right in front of me to fill the people in because we'll continue to talk about goalies. It's all goalie episode. Uh, it's just me in my room in Winnipeg, Cam, and Greg at his humble abode in Kenora. So yeah, if, there, if there's going to be... A, if there's a delay in between the conversation, blame technology. Yeah, stupid technology. I blame iPhone. Oh, man, I am having a great time with my iPhones right now. This is all made on iPhone. But now, suddenly, if I don't have my phone plugged in, it dies within a half hour. Within a one half hour. It's so, like, both my phones are plugged in right now. One of them's recording this, and the other one I'm talking to Greg on. It's just, we're ghetto rigging today. Two dudes in rooms. We should, that's what it's titled. Two dudes in rooms. I'm going to probably have to charge my phone, too. You plug her in. You find a plug-in, you make it happen. Okay, hold on. I'm looking up Henrik Lundqvist and uh, uh, accreditation. Well, like, when you think about it, there's just been so many Montreal Canadiens goalies that have won, especially in recent memory, like Josie Theodore and Carey Price. Like, that's something pretty outstanding. Why is it that Montreal gets all the good goalies and all the bad teams? It's kind of, well, here, I'm, oh, yeah, he did. He did win a Vesna trophy. On, on June 20th, 2013, Lundqvist won the Vesna Trophy at the 2012 NHL Awards in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's not what I'm... Like, I mean MVP, though. Oh, of the uh, league? Oh, yeah, I don't think anyone's won that except... My, Can, Canadian... Like, who's the, who's the last goalie to win MVP, apart from Carey Price, who was in... Jose Theodore. Was it, okay, what's that award called? I'm the worst hockey fan. Art Ross Trophy? Okay, I'm Googling it right now. Our Ross Trophy. Here we go. Okay, that's fine. Let's see the winners. Okay. Uh, Art Ross is scoring. What are you talking about? Art Ross is scoring. Okay, then it's Art Ross. It's, uh... What is it? Um... I thought Art Ross was wrong, actually, but... Um... Heart uh, Memorial. The Heart. All right, let's see. Right. No, no, I, I have the internet in front of me. I don't know this stuff. I'm not a hockey fan. Okay, before Carey Price, the last goalie to win it was, in fact, Jose Theodore. And before that was Dominic Hasek back-to-back, 98-97. Wow. Hold on, and then before that... You know who else won back-to-back that year? What? Go ahead. You know who else won back-to-back in 97-98 was the Detroit Red Wings? Yeah, and he was not on either of those teams. No, and you know who else just recently went back to back? Drake. Ah, come on! You know what is funny? When you were saying back to back, I kept thinking like back to back. <laughs> hey, the Toronto up Blue Jays, the clincher going to the playoffs. We're going to the playoffs. Yeah, that's cool. Good for them. Good, good to see the city of Toronto um, get something like that. Okay, you ready for this? I'm and gonna they're really supporting their really supporting their team. Go ahead, Cam. Go, oh, sorry. No, they need it. They need it. Like look at all oh, Kyle Lowry's coming in, the, the, the slim reaper now. Actually I can't steal that. That's Kevin Durant's, but he's coming in slimmer, baby faced assassin. He's looking good. Toronto imagine though, we talked about this. I don't know if we talked about it on air. If Toronto okay, how good the Blue Jays are, Toronto like realistically realistically could be contenders in probably like four or five years in the NHL. In the NBA, they're like one player away from like actually being there. Imagine Toronto in like three to five years. They're going to be like the Mecca. They're going to be the greatest. Well, it's all about if they can sign Price or not for the 
for Blue Jays. But the other thing, too, is they could have had the Buffalo Bills. Like, they could have been a really good team, a really good sports city for, like, the first time in their lifetime. But then they'd lose the Argos. Come on. What about Chad Owens? What about Chad Owens? What about Ricky Ray? <laughs> Frito-Lay Ray. Okay, I'm going to give you a year, Okay. Who was the last goalie to win the MVP Hart Trophy? 1961-62. You named him at the start, by the way. Uh, Johnny Bauer? Jacques Plant, Montreal. Plante. See, like, they've had three goalies in a lifetime win it. Like, that's ridiculous. Here, I'm going to name all the goalies. And then 53-54, Al Rollins for the Blackhawks, another original six. And then... Well, yeah, oh, it was 53-54. There couldn't have been another team. Good. Great point. I didn't think. <laughs> <laughs> there is only six teams at that point. And then Chuck Rayner in forty nine fifty. And then before him, there was only one other one: Roy Werters, New York Americans. So out of I believe we named six goalies, three yeah. of them are Canadians. That's real sad. Well, no, Jacques. No, there's four right there. I think. No, I guess so. Jacques Plant, Jose Theodore, Carey Price all played for Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, three of the six that have won, like, because Hasek won back-to-back, so it doesn't really, you know. But, like, out of the six goalies that have won, three of them are Canadians. Oh, like Montreal Canadiens. I yeah. like Canadian-born players. No, no, they're all Canadian. Hasek's Canadian by, by like, trait. It still, it still counts. Fair enough. Okay, so let's get to the show. Um, this was not what we were going to talk about. No, not at all. Jet stuff to talk about, um, including what they've done so far in preseason, current cuts, as well as um, talking about the new seating arrangements and obstructed views and upset fans. Um, the other stuff we are going to talk about, uh, Victor Louvre came out and said some comments about um, the drug scene in both the NHL and over in Sweden. Um and we have some other news from Cam. Kind of an update in the Patrick Kane case, but... Uh, oh, really? Perfect. Yeah. Good. I was wondering about that, because I have not been keeping up with that. Yeah. So, lots to talk about. So, let's get right into it. Um, what do you think, Jets? How have they done this preseason there, Cameron? Well, they've so far played four games. They have lost all four games. Uh, the Jets lost... Their first preseason game, they lost one nothing in overtime to the Wild. Uh, overtime th- uh, three on three. The lines that they've used for the most part in the game that I watch against the Wild, like I've watched all the games, but the one I paid attention to, these were the lines that they were rolling. They were rolling Ehlers with Perot and Toby or or uh, Truba. They were rolling Buff with Wheeler and Shifley, which actually that line was on the ice when the the Wild scored because Buff Buff and Wheeler went on two on one. Buff, instead of passing it, because it was a, he kind of went in a little too tight, rung it around, w- took a shot, missed, rung around the boards. And it's something that you don't think about when you're playing 4-on-4, four four, but 3-on-3, three three, if you don't make that pass, if you don't hit the goalie on that shot and get the face off, you better hustle back, and they did not, and they got scored on. And the other line was uh, Stafford, Burmistrov, and uh, Truba. Um, one note on the Buffalo goal. He didn't actually shoot it. He was he just put a really bad saucer pass. Oh, did he? Oh, up. sorry. He, he tried to hit uh, Wheeler with a saucer pass and it just missed. Okay, so never mind. I don't. I I wasn't trying to put blame on Buff. I was just pointing out if you miss your passes or anything, or like the goalie, be prepared to hustle back because not that Shifley isn't great at playing like skating backwards because I'm sure he is, but. When you have NHL caliber players coming down on you, it's two on one. They're going to make you look silly, and that's what happened. No, I totally agree, hundred yeah. um, percent. And then they. The uh, other thing that I noticed, well, uh, I guess maybe you can tell me. I haven't been able to have the opportunity to watch any games, but how has Burmese Shrub looked? I've actually only watched one game where he played, and it was against the Wild. It seemed like he was just getting his footing back. He's he did have the puck. He was really he was decent along the boards, but he didn't really stand out to me, to be honest. Like he he looked like he he didn't look like he did he looked like he belonged, but he didn't stand out. He definitely isn't getting sent to the Moose or anything like that. Like he he'll be here for sure. Well, I, I think they determined that. I, I don't think there's any reason for him to go. And the great thing is, if you really think about it. In this sense, um, they 
he essentially had a stint in the minors without them even having to pay him. Like, if you think about it. Oh, in the KHL? Yeah. I don't consider the KHL minors, but it's still, like, he's not playing in the NHL. They didn't have to pay for him to play for two years and give him good ice time, right? Yeah, so, it was off the books. It, it was, it, yeah, that, that's it, a good way to think about kind it. Kind of a win-win for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe we should talk about the disaster that happened in Minnesota. Okay, Sunday. here. Well, I'll, okay, they lost. They put. They're leading up to that game. They lost three to two to the Oilers in Edmonton. Then I went to the game on Friday where they lost four three to the Oilers. They gave up a three goal lead in six minutes, and. Uh, that's where, um, it came across, uh, they, they weren't playing the greatest lineup, but the one thing that I did notice about the Jets, it will carry over from last, from last year. We talked about it immensely power or penalty trouble. There was so many penalties, which actually cost them the game, obviously. And then leading into yesterday's game or two days ago game, Sunday night, uh, they lost eight to one to the wild. Greg, did you watch this game at all? No, I did not. I like watched. I, I haven't had a chance to watch any. Uh, oh Jeff right. Oh. Well, I watched this game, or about half of it. It was essentially like I'm going to give the Jets a benefit of the doubt and say it was essentially Shifley, Truba, and Hutchinson with the Manitoba Moose playing a almost full roster Minnesota Wild club. Yeah, and that's like I was looking at who was playing, and that's what it seemed like. As yeah. Much of a scapegoat as that is, it is true when you're playing against. Pretty much a full lineup because it's Minnesota. At this point in time, they know that pretty much this is their roster for the year. They're not going to really add anybody new. Um, so what's the point, right? And that's that's a fair point to make. Like they're not really going to go out and be like, oh, we're going to put a bunch of junior or a bunch of new guys on our team. They're building with the team they have because it's they think they can go all the way this year. Um, so. I, I see, like, they're just essentially warming up that team. They didn't need to see any of their rookies play. So, it was kind of the Manitoba Moose versus um, the Minnesota Wild. And, you know, it just shows you that maybe all these rookies aren't ready to play in, in the NHL yet either. So Exactly. And I believe either leading into that game or directly after that game, or the, within the next hours of that game ending, uh, it came out all the cuts that they made and the players that they sent down and the players they sent back to junior. And they cut, instead of doing bit by bit, they did 16. They cut 16 players, so 14 sent to the Moose, two to uh, junior. And so now they only have to cut four more players to have a full NHL squad because Maurice said he wanted to make the, de- he wanted to have the full roster by, obviously you have to have your full roster anyways, by game one of the season. So he wanted to see what he can work with. So tonight it seems as though they're running the team that they like to see on the ice game one. Well, that's good to know. The only thing that I'd want to put in there was I was a little shocked that they didn't want to see more out of Brendan Lemieux. Like, he was one of the notable cuts, I thought. Oh, yeah, Um, I I have a list of the notable cuts. Apart from Lemieux uh, was Josh Morrissey, Joel Armia, Chase DeLeo, and then these are the three players that have to be put through waivers. It's Julian Melchiori, Matt Frazier, and... Matt ha- or Mark Frazier and Matt Halischuk, which I'm a little surprised they didn't hold on to Halischuk, but obviously with the youth movement going through, it, it's clear they've made their decision. Um, the other thing that I did want to note on there was, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Melchiori made, like, I'm sure Frazier, Melchiori, and Halischuk all didn't get claimed because I saw a picture that Melchiori was at train camp today for the Moose. So, as the Moose training camp opens... Okay, well, that's good to know. But uh, back to what you said about Lemieux. At the start of camp, when camp opened, uh, coach, what's the coach's name? Oh, my goodness. Paul Maurice. Paul Maurice? Yeah, sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm out of it. All right. Case of the Tuesdays. No, it's not. All right. Paul Maurice mentioned he was doing an interview and they were asking him about players and he said Lemieux is sticking out. Like he said, he expected him to have an average camp, but he's really sticking out. And then... When he sent him down, people asked him, well, why didn't you keep Lemieux? He said, it's not that he did anything wrong. He said, we have the option to send him back for another year, and another year in junior is never going to hurt you. I believe he put up 41 goals last year. 
They're not expecting like big offense. They want him to round out his game. But Paul Maurice said he was very impressed with Lemieux all camp. And it was my favorite line to watch the other night was Lemieux, DeLeo, and Lapon. And Lapon's still one of the players on the team right now. Yeah, I'm. I don't know if it's just because he plays for Team Canada, but I've always been a fan of Lapon, so I'd love to see him make the team. Oh, me too. And I'm actually, I did not know this until after the game on Friday that Lemieux was still a 19-year-old. Like, he looked like he was like 21, 22, the way he played. And so, I doubt he'll, I, I'd love to see him get invited to Team Canada. They're really moving to, like, World Juniors. I know nowadays they really move towards, like, having just skill throughout the whole lineup. But if they want a role player to bring in penalties and not really take any too many penalties or anything and get under your skin... He's your guy. There's no one better. I don't think there's anyone better in junior at this point in time than Brendan Lee. Would you say that he is sort of like what Brad Marshawn was when he kind of broke through the league? Uh, yes, I would say he does remind me of Brad Marshawn. I guess I want to say Brad Marshawn has more scoring prowess, but I can't really say that because he was also on a line with Bergeron basically his whole career. And if he wasn't with Bergeron, he's with Krejci. So it's like, yeah. he's, he has the upside of that. No, he does definitely remind me of Brad Marchand. If Lemieux makes... I mean, Lemieux's going to be a crowd favorite. He already was, or already is in Winnipeg. But... Yeah, which, which is nice to see. Oh, of course. Oh, definitely. But if he made Team Canada, he would be like one of those guys that you just love watching. Like, not even that he could score anything, but all the hits. Like, they never... That line of Lapon, DeLeo, and Lemieux did not stop. They were, like, going 110%. Every shift they had, it was it was it was something to see. I loved it. Yeah, no, I, I that's what you want though. You want guys that are going to put that effort in every single game. Um, I, know. I just I really hope that he works out, um, and, I, and I think he will. But like, it's it's really proving to be maybe he was the big piece of that cane train to help you think about it because. Like, Army, as good as I'm sure he's going to be, it looks like Lemieux's going to eclipse that. Yeah, honestly, um, well, obviously the big piece, like, physically and, and like, on paper would be Tyler Myers. But for the future, I think Lemieux, Lemieux reminding me of, like, you know how the big piece in the trade way back, I'm only using this because it's my knowledge and most people would know it. When Mike Richards got traded to L.A., Philly wanted Braden Shen and Wayne Simmons. And Wayne Simmons was more of like the throw-in extra guy. I have a feeling that Lemieux is going to turn into a a la Wayne Simmons where it's like he turns out to be the better guy out of the whole deal, out of all the guys. And as you just said, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, you know, he's the kind of guy that you want in a playoff run. And who knows? Like, if the Jets go get somewhere this year, like, why wouldn't they bring him up? Like they did Andrew Kopp last year. Let's say, you know, Barry Colts don't do super well. Boom, now you have Lemieux. And he might be a guy that could impact your team in the playoffs. They actually, um, when they made the cuts, I was reading online, like uh, a few of the Jets beat, beat writers were saying, uh, Brendan Lemieux, if his season, not that ba- Barry doesn't really have the strongest team. They have a good team, but I don't really know the rundown on them right now. They said if his season ends early, do not be surprised. I know what nobody be surprised if he shows up on the Manitoba Moose roster and makes an immediate impact. Like depending, obviously they like to bring him to the Jets, but say if the Jets aren't doing great, send him to the Moose, and hopefully they're going to make the playoffs, or even the Jets make the playoffs. I I could see it. I could see what you just said there. Like oh, he's one of those guys he could just step in. Uh, who's done that before? Darren Helm did that. Remember, met he used to play for Medicine Hat, and then he didn't play a regular season game, and then he played. I think he played almost every playoff game that run and then won the Stanley Cup, and he was monstrous. Like, he was huge for Detroit in that, in that playoff run. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, we, we should move on, though. Let's yeah. talk about impeded sight lines now. Um, the Jets, is, as most of you guys should know if you guys were listening to this podcast last year, um, the Jets... On Shark decided to put in a new row of seats that they could kind of sell to upsell some people. So they did that. However, uh, it's got some fans outraged as it's cut down their sight lines and viewpoints to the field or to the to the field to the ice. Yeah, I actually have like well, we have lots of people we know. I don't know if you've talked to any of your friends, but 
Friends of mine were at the game the uh, on Friday night, the same game I was at, and they used to have row one seats. They did get offered the seats, but the price was like, th- um, I believe, two and a half to three times more a seat just for the extra, the extra like a little bit bigger of a chair, and you have kind of like a small desk place in front of you to like put drinks and whatnot, which is convenient. But for the price, they didn't want to pay it. Now their sight line, they actually, if the people in front of them lean forward, they can't see the glass in front of them or the goalie. And they were direct, they were attack zone, uh, attack zone corners. And they're now in row two, which used to be row one. And if the people, yeah, with the people lean forward, they can't see the goalie and they're in row one. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, some people are very outraged. Like, I know Sportsnet ran an article, and obviously you're going to pick the worst one to help your argument. But, like, I'll post the article, because this picture in the article is an is a travesty. It's an atrocity. Like, I couldn't... If I showed up, like, they decided to take the route of... Obviously, they know designing this arena that there were going to be issues building this. They built it to add more seating, and by adding more seating, it brings in $1.8 million more in revenue per year. But is it is that one point eight million really worth it by pissing off everyone behind them because now their sight line is just there's nothing like some people got pooched real hard on that and they knew this was going to be an issue but they decided to stay silent and now they're going to have to deal with it. Do you have any suggestions on how they could fix this or what? How would you react if you had season seats and they didn't tell you about it and then they affected your sight line? Uh, I'd be pretty outraged one for one and like back when the Jets were coming back I said probably the best seat and the cheapest seat would be Cat Corners row one because you can see the whole ice there's nothing like impeding your pro- like impeding your view right because um, I had sat up top for a Moose playoff game all these years ago and I had never had a better seat in my life um, not to say lower bowl isn't great to sit in it is but for the price that you were going to pay to sit in the upper bowl or up top and sit in the corner, you wouldn't have a better seat in that arena. Plus, there were, and now to know that all that money, like, yeah, you've had great four great years, but now you've got crappy sight lines. It's not the best thing. And yeah, this is something that you should have been able to tell fans and maybe have fans vote on. Be like, you know, we want to add these seats to add a little bit of revenue. However, they're going to cut down sight lines. Do you guys want it? Yes or no? The vote probably would have gone to no. And the golden boy that is. True North would have stayed the Golden Boy. Now they're kind of enraged a lot of fans. So it'll be interesting to see what they do uh, from here. Maybe they reduce the price of those seats because they are obstructed view seats now. Or I I don't know how they go on from here and how they kind of protect their good name because they've been kind of the good name in sports for so long, right? So at least in the eyes of all the fans in Winnipeg. Definitely. They've, well, like even... We had heard rumors, obviously, because we live here. When the Jets, like, rumblings that they might come back, they were, we had heard a few big names bounce around. Like, I remember there was the the Moose. They were going to stay the Moose for the name, or they were going to go to, like, I heard that there were Polar or Polar Bears or something, and then a few other names. But the peer, the fan pressure was so strong that they obviously, I think the clear-cut choice was Jets to begin with. But it would have been nice to see the other options. They would have never gone to public vote because it would have been Jets. But it's just, I, I'd i like to know, like, it's fear of missing out or fear of the unknown. But I really wish they would have released some of the names and designs to see what the other options were. Yeah, um, I agree with you. But I don't know how you can bring a team back and not call them the Jets. <laughs> okay, so st- staying somewhat on topic... If Quebec, oh, actually, yeah, there's like some some meetings going on with Quebec. Las Vegas and Quebec, you have to call them the Nordiques. Yeah, oh, really? You think? Come on. Why not? I I don't, I don't, I, okay. I'm not really, like, I don't fancy history that much. Like, I mean, I love learning about history, but, like, change is good. You got to accept change sometimes, and, like, I don't know. I, that's why I wasn't, when they named them the Jets, I was kind of like, oh, Okay, I guess. But then again, that's also because when when they left, we were five. We were four or five. And so it really, the Jets didn't, re- it, to me, they were a ghost story. Like, that's why I didn't necessarily, like, cheer for them or, like, support them 100%. Because it was more like hearing, like, hearing folklore. It's like, it's hard to believe. So that's why I, I would have liked to see if they would have been named another team. Yeah, that would have been cool. Um, two 
too much pressure to, to name them the Jets. So oh, yeah, like, no, of course. That's that's exactly it. And getting back to it, like that's where it'll be very interesting to see if, in fact, the Golden Boy True North keeps their shiny name or they get tarnished a bit because of this. Because not the brightest decision to be... Well, I mean, it's a great decision revenue-wise, but to piss off the first couple rows of people who have been like your... your um, like a loyal fans, like why? Why would you take that chance? Yeah, um, yeah, I don't really know. Maybe it was the engineer just didn't tell True North. <laughs> I like, I don't think. So. Come on, who's that? If I, that, I'd love to hear that. You know what? If that is in fact the case, I would let True North just be like, you know what? You uh, send your concerns to this guy. Can you do that? That's kind of against the law, isn't it? I'm not really sure. If anyone knows, let us know. I'd like to know that. If you could just kind of like toss someone under the bus. Like, don't tell them like, oh, here's his social insurance number. This is where he lives. This is his phone number. But just place blame on someone. Because the internet's a scary place. This is where his life works. This is where they could destroy someone's life by doing that, Cameron. What's that? They could destroy someone's life by doing that. But That's true. Definitely. All right, Greg. You you uh, you were uh, you were mentioning earlier, before we even started the podcast, about this Victor Louvre gentleman. Yes. For those who don't know who the love machine Victor Louvre is, um, he is a prospect for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he came out with some interesting comments um, about the cocaine scene in the NHL and quote-unquote, the party scene as well. He said, this is under direct quote. I'm going to have to find the article. I have um, it actually right in front of me. It's loading right now. Okay, well, why don't you say it? Because it's right in front of you, unlike myself. Okay, well, the, 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 I'll, I'll tweet the article. It's off Pension Pound Puppets, as Greg mentioned. Uh, there's a lot of cocaine in the NHL. Victor Louvre tells Swedish News. In a conversation with a Swedish news outlet published Friday, Leafs prospect Victor Louvre comment on a cocaine and drug abuse in professional hockey leagues. Uh, and then his quotes were, In the NHL, there's a lot of cocaine. There's bound to be some in the AHL as well. I have not seen anything. No teammate from what I've known. Because they asked him uh, if they've... Uh, uh, Louv went on to add that he has not seen any of his Marley's teammates partake in the drug. Um, oh, go ahead, Greg. No, I said, okay, I, I hope that's true, but you never yeah. really know. Oh, when pressed uh -huh. to confirm his accusation... Louvre reaffirmed his previous claim. Sure, this is how the talk is, but I'm certain it's not just talk. There are players everywhere who do it. If you have money, you probably have easy access. Then there's the attitude over there compared to Sweden. Not with cocaine, maybe, but with hash, cannabis, and stuff you smoke. That is something you encounter everywhere. Louvre also commented on drinking in the league. I have not been out at a bar scene over there, but some players are out during whenever. It can be uh, the evening before a game. The NHL isn't spending much time addressing the situation, according to Louv. They probably don't want to talk about it. It doesn't belong to, or it doesn't belong to sports to do stuff like that. But I have the feeling the NHL doesn't take this seriously. They don't do much. They do doping tests. I was tested like three times last season. One, one on the team was caught and was suspended for 20 games, and that would have been uh, Brad Ross. Oh, Brad. oh, Brad Ross. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So all. Yeah. Oh, well, Carter Ashton, they're just talking about uh, alcohol and direct drugs. But yes, Carter Ashton was caught for doping, per se, with a, a, a puffer. Come on. Yeah, we've we, talked about, we've talked about it. You know how we stand on that garbage. So, Greg, we've, to, we've even heard rumblings, like, in the city. Obviously, not name names or anything. It's there. I mean, even... Like, people our age who want to party. It's not that hard. Okay, I shouldn't say this, like, out on the internet or thing, anything, but it's a reality that if you want drugs nowadays, it's not that hard to go find some at all. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. And um, especially when I you... I don't think it's ever really been that hard. Like, I don't know. I didn't live back in, in the old days, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't that hard back in the days even to get drugs, but I don't know. However, yes, it's not very hard to get cocaine, and these guys are going to do it. You know, they feel that they have all this money, and they're, they're invincible, right? So they don't really care what happens to them. And especially when you get paid, 
like when you're young and you don't really have much to like spending and all basically all your expenses are covered except for like cell phone and rent and some of your food that you buy you're gonna have a lot of the like free money to spend instead of save and when you're younger and you have a lot of money like a lot more than the average joe your age you're gonna want to go party and you have amenities that other people say like greg and i who aren't professional athletes like your doors are open of course. Are, what's Most that professional athletes. Sounded like you said are Oh yeah, no, we, okay, fine. We are professional athletes. We just don't get paid for it. Oh, my mistake, Greg. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you're going to have certain uh, doors open for you a lot easier than, than the average Joe is just because you're, you're a face of, you're, you're in the public eye and people want to be with you and be, and party with you. Yep. I don't agree. I don't disagree with anything you just said. Yeah, and I know as for him talking about the NHL, they know or they do, they kind of brush it under the rug. The NHL is a different league compared to the other leagues in terms of they will dr- allegedly they will drug test you, but if they find out that you're doing this drug, they want to help you rehab and they keep it quiet. They don't want to they don't want to make it a big scene like say the NFL with marijuana, how you can get suspended almost a whole season for having being caught with marijuana. Personally, it doesn't look at it as an issue league-wide, so they're like, well, we can get this guy help. Um, but the other thing, too, is maybe the NHL needs to start suspending players because if people, if players start seeing this as being a consequence where they can't play and they have to choose, okay, am I going to go do cocaine or am I going to want to play hockey? If that's the choice, then I think for most players, it's a pretty easy decision to just say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play hockey. And that's the, um, that's the advantage that the other sports have is that that is a, a fear of the other players, and that's why when they do those drugs, they know full, well aware that they could be drug tested the next day and lose their job. Yep, essentially. And it's, it's, a, it's a harsh reality. It's like any other job where you, unless you're on welfare, um, drug testing is a real thing. You can get drug tested. Wait, what do you mean by unless you're on welfare, you can get drug tested? You don't get drug tested if you're on welfare, which is a joke. Okay, but oh, at any job is what you're saying. Okay, at I, any I, other job, pretty much you have to get drug tested, and there are people who do drugs still in a lot of businesses. If anyone's seen Wall Street, um, you know the drugs are out there. But it's it's time to maybe start looking at harsher penalties for these guys who do the drugs because saying that oh, you know. Fine, boys will be boys, or you know, let's get this guy rehab help. Well, you know what? He's going to rehab, um, so he misses part of the season, potentially, or misses some of the off season. Um, it might not help him because he'll maybe relapse. Maybe the best thing to do is put some fear, because fear does do a lot of change. Which is bad as as bad as it is, you know, you start putting fear into people, saying, you know what? If you get caught with any drug, we don't care what it is, it's an automatic 25-game suspension. And that's a quarter of a season gone, and that's unpaid quarter of a season. These guys are either going to have to grow up really quickly or look at themselves and say, do I really want to throw everything I've worked my entire life away just for a drug or just to park? And that's crazy to think about. Like, say if you got suspended a quarter of a season. Imagine going three months without pay. At like your normal, at whatever job you do right now, how would that affect your life? Uh, that'd be a big effect on your life. That would change things drastically. And these guys aren't the smartest with their money to begin with, so that would be a very, uh, very tough, tough go for three months. And as nice as it would be to say, oh, you know, I'd love to party with these guys because it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, I think they got to realize once the season started, they, they've got to grow up. And, you know, I, I don't know. No, I, I it's, really weird to, it's weird to, like, try and, like, put yourself in other people's shoes when it's, like, like okay, obviously, I'm not saying we were raised proper, like, the best way or anything like that. But it's, like, when, when I'm trying to think about it, I'm like, Kate, hey, you're, you're getting paid to play a sport you love. 
uh, more than the average Joe makes in a year, even well, the average say the average Joe makes AHL money, whatever. Even if you're in the AHL making this money, you're getting paid to play hockey and travel. How awesome is that? And then you're just gonna chance losing that by doing something that kind of gives you a fun time for a bit, but then it's like the consequences are so much so more so much bigger. Why would you do that? Like for us, it's easy to say because the temptation isn't there. But then again, well, maybe I, I don't know. I, I can't find the allure in it myself and it doesn't sound like you can either, Greg, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe they got to implement, as you said, a harsher reality for the players and put fear into them sometimes because fear does do some good things and some bad things. Well, also, if you think about it, um, like, These players don't look at it and say, "Well, I'm, I'm gonna eventually have crazy like health side effects." There's the things you can get from doing like sustained cocaine abuse or use is insane, like disgusting things. Like yeah, you can lose uh, the top of your mouth; it'll be morphed with the, your nose. That's disgusting. There's, there's that. There's the whole like brain issue. You want to talk about concussion problems mixed in with cocaine? Like that's. Your, your brain's mush at that point. Um, there, there's tons of side effects to doing cocaine, but these players think they're invincible, that nothing's going to hurt them. Um, and, you know, they're making all this money living the quote-unquote good life, so nothing can go wrong. And, uh, you know, I don't know what it's going to take to knock it into players that they shouldn't be doing this. And we don't even know how many players do it. We don't know what the percentage of the league is. But even if it's over 10%, that's an alarming number. What's 10% of 30? Well, well, no. Like, if you think about it, I think the number of NHL players is, like, something like 790 or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Um, or no, that's, that's way too many. Um, let's just go, like, each team has 30 players. So, 30 times 30 is... 900? 3,600. 30, 3, or 30, 360. Oh, right? Mama, I said 900. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're right. 900. 900 is right. I don't know why I thought it was what? Like really? We suck at this. God, oh, God dang it. We suck so bad. Anyways, 900. 790 players. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Wow, this is, uh, if you're a mathematician and you've got a calculator out, you're probably yelling. You're probably yelling right now. Definitely okay. yelling. We're, we're all about hockey stuff. We're not about the math. Let's be honest here. Cam can barely even count the two or tie his shoes. Never mind try times in 30 by 30. So let's just say, 790 players, 10% of that is 79 players. That's a lot of players. That is a lot of people doing actively doing cocaine. That's two players per team. More than two players per team, pardon me. You know what? I'm. That's probably a very realistic stat. But here's my other question. Um, or not my other question, but... Oh yeah, no, it is a question. Do you think if, as a team, you find out that your player, your all-star guy, let's say in this case it's, you know, let's make up, let's make up a superstar. Joey let's Fatone. Yakub um, Warsel or something like that. Fine, Yakub Warsel. Best player. He's your best player ever. You know, he's a Sidney Crosby-esque player. And you find out he does cocaine every after every game before every puck drop, and that's his like, release. Okay. Okay. Are you willing to say? Are you willing to put in the ten million dollar or twelve million dollar investment into him because the guy goes and parties every game, or are you going to be a little bit more hesitant to give him that big money because you know this guy is a drug addict? I will definitely be more hesitant. Why would you want to invest? Why would you want to gamble on your future with something that is such a gamble in itself by just like any night? See, Jakob goes out and parties and gets high on coke, and he's a little bit drunk too, and decides. Just even makes a crazy decision to jump in a car and something horrific happens. Even yeah. whether or not to him or to someone else. You, that's on your hands. Because you you enabled that by paying investing in him and he did not return the investment. And you're losing out on money and now your franchise is set back five years. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, And to bring it back to reality, you know how last year we talked about how allegedly... Um, Jacob Truba had some issues with, with cocaine. We don't know how true it is, but it, it was alleged that this was the issue. 
that might halter that, that might hurt how much True North is willing to gamble on him and offer him in in contract talks this year. If they go to arbitration, you can bet that that's going to be brought up. If it isn't, if it is true, that's definitely. If I'm a if I'm a business owner, I'm cutting guns a blazing. No wonder players don't go to arbitration. The, your 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 boss says everything they don't like about you. Why would you want to hear that? The guy parties too much. That's not something as a player I want to hear. No, um, especially when you want to like win and you want to be in the NHL because you've worked your whole life and someone's coming to the table and saying exactly like, oh, he parties too much. I'm not. You're not worth what you want because you're just going to blow it because he party too much. I'm not investing that much in you if you're not going to invest in me. Exactly. That's that's a very true point. Um, kind of move on from this, uh, just because you know it is a serious topic, and we don't always like to be super serious, but it's something that needs to be talked about. And I think that instead of shoving it under the rug, maybe it needs to be more of a a talking point. Issue in NHL, like it is in the NFL. You know, everyone comments about how you know you can beat your wife and get four games, but you get a whole year if you smoke smoke weed. You know, maybe it needs to be that scenario where it's like, oh, you start doing cocaine, you get 25-game suspension. Versus Patrick Kane, where we don't really know his scenario, and a lot of people were upset, very upset last week, at both the Chicago Blackhawk organization, as well as um, Patrick Kane himself, as allegedly um, the quote-unquote rape kit that was used um, on this accuser um, for Patrick Kane's rape case, um, was delivered to the mother's door, uh, the, the mother of the alleged, of the accused, I guess, or the accuser, um, of the woman, and it's now come out that that was untrue, um, and apparently it was tampered with, there's a bunch of random facts about this story that really seem odd, and it forced the, the accuser's lawyer to quit on the case, so we don't really have an update other than the lawyers, the lawyer of the plaintiff, which is the woman that's claiming that um, Patrick Kane sexually assaulted her, uh, is now out. And I don't know, I haven't heard if she's gotten a new one, but like last week I said something on Twitter, which was like, I know that I said, um, you know, you're not, you're innocent until proven guilty. As true as that is, this is still an awful thing, and I felt I felt pretty bad for being like sleeping in under rug, being like, oh yeah, you know, he's not he's not doing anything wrong. Regardless, you know, it's really coming out now in professional sports that this is something that happens because I think Derek Rose has some allegations towards him as well about a sexual assault case. So maybe it's the players. Um, either way, like this is not something to be not serious about because. Sexual assault is one of the scariest things ever, and it damages a person for a lifetime. And I, by no means, by saying you're not, you're innocent until you're proven guilty, I by no means support anything Patrick Kane does or think that he's in the right by any means. All I'm saying is, instead of jumping on a guy until he's proven guilty, wait for the evidence to show up. But now that the evidence seems to be that this actually happened, that's a terrible, terrible thing. But we don't know until there's actual... Um, actual, you know, justice in the case, uh, whether it happened or not. But either way, this woman's life has probably been affected for the rest of her life, and I hope that if it comes out that maybe this sexual assault didn't happen, I don't want people jumping on her saying, you know, all you wanted was money, because that's a terrible thing to say about anyone, and I don't want that for her, because this whole ordeal has changed her life for probably the wor- for the worst for the rest of her life, which is a terrible thing, just because she decided... You know, I'm going to go home with this hockey player. So, for better or worse, stay safe, people. Um, don't want this happening to you, whether it's whichever side you're on. It's, it's a terrible, terrible situation. So, f- for that, we're going to wait for updates on the Patrick Kane case, and I hope I articulate that, articulated that okay that you somewhat understood what I was saying. Any comments there, Cameron? Because you've been really quiet. Oh no! I was just letting you. I'm I'm 100% with you. It's it's a horrific act, and we shouldn't we shouldn't jump on anyone until uh, the justice is served. And just as you you even mentioned about Pete Rose or Derek sorry Derek Rose, Rose. Um, basketball star. He actually broke his left orbital bone today again. Another injury. 
Um, however, like glass. what's that? That guy is like glass. He is walking glass, from what I've noticed. However, just when you brought that up, um, uh, these player or these people growing up who are professional athletes, once again, back to the cocaine thing, they're people of privilege. They're not used to people saying, okay, I'm not trying to say Kane did it or Kane didn't or anyone who does it did it. But when it's a professional athlete, they're not used to hearing no. They've heard yes pretty much their entire life. So when they hear no, they might react a little differently than one of us, per se, when we're it's like, no, okay, got it. Because they're, oh my God, I'm Patrick Kane. I'm Derek Rose. How dare you? And so... I know that's probably not what happened at all, but when I think of that, like people of privilege and whatnot, and higher, like higher, they have not higher class, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Base, doors are opening higher for them. Prowess, maybe. Higher what? Prowess, maybe. Yeah, there you go. Higher prowess. Basically, when you're in the quote unquote elite of the world, per se, with the amount of money and like fame that you carry around. You, you don't like hearing the word no, and it's almost like a challenge or a smack in the face, and you want to make that no a yes, which some aspects, like in sports, when there's like, oh, no, you can't break that record, you could do it, but it doesn't necessarily translate to other things. Like maybe Kane thought, oh, I just maybe had some, or we had a little bit of rough sex or something. But actually, in reality, it turns out uh, you sexually assaulted somebody. So I I've, obviously, I'm not trying to dig myself in a hole. It totally sounds like it, though. I'm just saying, when I think of, like, athletes being, sometimes you think, oh, they're just going after him for the money. But maybe they're just not used to hearing the word no. And then they took it a little too far and went through with the act, even though uh, they should not have, because it's illegal and it's horrific. Those are two perfect words, horrific and illegal. And, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying 100% there, Cameron. All right, we got to move on. From, we gotta, yeah, we, we, got a we gotta give him a Cameron, sandwich of happy now. It's gonna be a short podcast, Cameron. We don't do short. No, we podcast. don't do short. Okay, well, let's give him a big old sandwich of happy coming up here. All right. Hey. Well, let's go to the city of Edmonton, where they were in distress the other day because their captain Andrew Ference went missing, and they needed a young six-year-old girl by the name of Spider Mabel, Mabel Took, or Took. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, Mabel. Um. She was Spider Mabel, and she rescued the Captain Andrew Ference from the evil, uh, the evil nemesis. I will post the link. Uh, basically, there's a six-year-old girl Mabel took who, uh, or take. I'm gonna say took. Anyways, Mabel, she it was her uh, Make a Wish Foundation. She wanted to save the city, and she loved the Oilers. So what better than the Make a Wish Foundation made a fake uh, distress signal on the TV and radio from like a fake news cast saying, oh, Mabel, we need you to come save Captain Andrew Ference. We need to play this season. And the whole city got in on it, and she went, like, finding clues and hints, and then she saved Andrew Ference. And I think these stuff like this is awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, that's... See, that's a great story to hear, and it's great to hear, um, not only the Oilers doing that, but, like, the entire city getting involved, and, you know, people understanding that this is, just, like... The answer is a shitty thing, but yeah, this is a great story. This is, I want to hear more stories like this. Yeah, well, here, let's let's continue. Good, uh, fun, but we're halfway through this enjoyable sandwich of happy. Uh, every goal, obviously every point that Jacob Truba scores this year is going to help the Jets. But now it's helping not just the Jets, but the Boys and Girls Club of Winnipeg because a local business is donating $1,000 for every goal that Truba scores and $500 to, for every assist he gets uh, on the season to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Winnipeg. Great. Awesome. And if you're a fan of soccer, you probably already saw this already, but the Tottenham Hotspurs had Wayne Gretzky attend their game over the weekend. And they spelled Gretzky wrong. They spelled it G-R-E-T-S-K-Y. Does nobody have internet in Tottenham? Nobody. Come on, Tottenham. <laughs> Pull it together, Tottenham. Pull it together. Tottenham, go home. You're drunk. Basically, yeah. Um, oh, and there's another video. I'd like you guys... Or that, that was a picture. There's a video of the Tottenham Hotspurs from a couple years ago of Jason Sudeikis... He's an American football coach, but teaching in London. I will tweet that. It's definitely worth your time. Um, and the last thing, just to end this delicious, happy sandwich, 
Sidney Crosby and Nathan McKinnon filmed a few episodes, uh, like commercials, where they worked at Tim Hortons. And it's at a Tim's drive through and it's hilarious. It's totally awesome. Because uh, one of them, it's like Sidney versus Nathan. And it's like, hey, Sidney, who do you, uh, or uh, Sidney's like, oh, can you name an East or Maritime hockey player? And everyone's like, oh, Sidney Crosby. And then he's like, oh, can you name anyone else? And there's this one lady's like, oh, yeah, that rookie last year, um, um, McGinn. And McKinnon's like, I will take it. Thank you. Point for me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty funny. For was, those who don't know, Tim Hortons is the Dunkin' Donuts of Canada, but ten times better. Tim Tim Hortons is like Dunkin' Donuts meets Starbucks. That's how good it is. Yeah. All hey, right. Tim Hortons, we need a sponsorship. We would love. Oh, delicious, delicious! I will eat a timid a day, a timid a day for the rest of my life. Um, and they're like, hey, you need to have a twelve pack of donuts every single podcast. I'd be like, hell yeah, I will. Call, every day? Jeez. All right. Okay. I'll, no, every podcast. Oh, every, every podcast. podcast. That's a lot yeah. of donuts. There's three of us and sometimes four of us. May, okay. All right. True. I, I, can, I can commit to four donuts. I mean, it's a lot and I don't need a diet. What's diets? I mean, you only live once, right? Hashtag YOLO. Exactly. Uh, speaking of Nathan McKinnon's... Uh, Nathan McKinnon... His Colorado Avalanche teammate, Eric Johnson, signed a seven-year, $42 million contract extension worth an average annual salary of $6 million. Thoughts, Greg? Is that a lot for Eric Johnson? Um, right now, he's treated as the number one defenseman on that team. So $6 million for your number one defenseman, I don't think that's too high. Um, I think he needs to perform a little bit better, but at the end of the day, I still think he's a decent defenseman. Um, I think he helps that team out regardless. So, okay, and uh, staying on with defensemen, Brent Seabrook signed an eight-year, fifty-four point eight million dollar contract extension with the Blackhawks, worth an average hit of six point eight seven five. Would you have done that, being the the Blackhawks, because they are strapped for money next year? Now they have a lot of guys already making a lot of money. Well, I don't know if Andrew Desjardins is ever going to play for them after his rookie contract, though. Um, they've they've definitely committed that their top guys are going to be Kane, Hayes, um, Seabrook, and Keith over the long term. So it's going to be interesting to see how this team works if that's the route they're going because they've definitely soaked up a lot of money in those guys. Now, it's still a better deal than Clefbaum's deal. <laughs> you know what? I actually talked to a few people about that Clefbaum deal and – Basically, uh, they all agree with like what you had to say about the like you're you're basically gonna cut even if he has if he turns out to be the defenseman he is, but you have to show commitment to some players because now they finally have someone of a nucleus. It's just they kind of overpaid a little bit for the that guy, just a little bit. Um. Oh, you have another signing you want to talk about, don't you, Greg? Um, just one second. On like the Dun on the Brent Seabrook thing, if you really think about it, they're paying Brent Seabrook and Duncan Keith around ten million dollars, which it's Brent Seabrook and Duncan Keith. That's in a way worth it. They're the best no, tandem in the uh, NHL. Pardon? They're the best pairing in the NHL, bar none. There's no one who comes close to them. I think, I think you could make the argument that Muzzin and uh, Dowdy are pretty pretty good. Um, now, so, okay. Are they any I think that'd be like the next. I think they're um, they're not near the same level, but they're there. In the sense, that I think they're good. But yes. Oh, just, before you say your fun news, Jimmy Slater got himself a job in Geneva, Switzerland, in the Swiss League. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. All right. Did someone make it out of Leaf Camp with a with a with a contract there, Greg? Uh, well, it wasn't Devin Fettiguchi or Curtis Glenn Cross. <laughs> Dang it. Um, but Brad Boys did. Um, he has impressed everyone um, and has been great for them. So they decided to reward him with a contract, which is good because he's another player that, hey, you know, if he plays well for the first, you know, 40 games, they can train him away for a draft pick because that's, that's the MO of the Leafs this year. They're just going to try to stop.
stockpile guys that are going to turn into draft picks for them. Who's going to be left? You got you need players on the team at the end of the season, Greg. Like every player on that team is like, oh yeah, we uh we might package them and trade deadline. I'm like, who's going to play? Are we going to play? Can we play? <laughs> yeah, it's uh definitely going to be a sight to behold once it does happen. But uh, who knows? Um, could be a good thing. Could be. Uh, and you know, I'm okay with them stockpiling if they put on the worst like lineup ever come April and March. Like I don't care. It's all about the future, Cameron. It's all about the future. Are you saying Austin Matthews is still the number one consensus consensus pick? He sure is. Thanks, Bob McKenzie. If you saw his preview show this week. Yeah. Well, I don't know who who's uh, who's better. You know, there's there's it's going to be a good draft again this year. So if you can get in the top five, you're going to get another solid player. Um, the Leafs did send down Mitch Marner back to the um, London Knights, which means London Knights are going to be a solid team, and as they always are. But the other thing about the London Knights that I do want to mention is that I actually, sorry, I meant Mitch Marner because I don't know anything about the London Knights. But Mitch Marner will probably play for Team Canada at the World Juniors, which means we could have another rookie for the Leafs play at um, at the World Juniors, which would be nice. Oh, yeah. Well, I'd like to send a thank you to uh, everyone in the Leafs organization for doing that because Mitch Marner and maybe, just maybe, Arizona, if they haven't already sent Dylan Strom down, give me that tandem, baby. Oh, mama. Come on. Best time of the year yeah. every year. And maybe, you know, Connor McDavid. Oh, yeah, get real, Greg. Come on now. They're not even playing Connor McDavid in preseason anymore. He didn't even play on last Friday. That's a what? Come on. Who else? Why am I going to watch Edmonton if Connor isn't playing? What is this? Yeah, very good point. Good point. Um, last thing I want to I want to mention, well, two things I want to quickly mention. Um, I bought NHL 16 about two weeks ago, and I did want to report back that it is Better than NHL 15, but still has a long way to go to meet the uh, meet the bar that NHL 12 set. Because NHL 12 is probably the best NHL that I've ever played. Now, what um, what what sets it like? Why is 12 so big? Is that when they first came in with like the hit stick, or like what happened from 11 to 12 that it's just this folklore of NHL 12? What happened? Um, just overall, everything about the game was so smooth. It they seem to have. Per- at that point, they seemed to have perfected what they were doing. Um, there were so many different things. I think that was the year you could like knock the net off, you could knock players' helmets off. There was lots of little things in NHL 12 that made it so good, but the core thing that made it great was the gameplay alone, the fluidity of just playing was so easy, so smooth. It was something where, you know, it took a lot of skill to be excellent, but people could pick it up. You could play it at parties, and it was something where everyone could, could play and be decent at. But overall, it was just it was just so much fun because it was probably the best one they've ever made. And it was a lot of reasons was because the gameplay was that much higher than they've ever had. And it just slowly regressed. Like, NHL 13 was shit. NHL 14 gained a little bit back. Then NHL 15 set back again. Just overall skating... Skating-wise, overall turning, like for some reason in NHL 13, every single turn that you made was like a freaking ridiculous turn. Like you couldn't you couldn't do a sharp cut for some reason. I don't know why that was, but they you just weren't able to do a sharp cut. Um, you had to do this like long, raw miss thing in NHL 13. The like, thing about NHL 16 is the play is a little bit more fluid, but there is still some... I don't know. I, I love the accuracies of the arenas. Like, it's great. The players look realer than ever. But it seems they're focusing on a lot of aesthetic things and not so much on the gameplay. As the gameplay still hasn't really improved in the last four years. And it's actually regressed since NHL 12. So that's the disappointing thing. That's a... That's we. That's... Well, I like how you're so passionate about it. When many people are. And it's good to hear that. Just because... It's like, that's a huge selling point. Like, lo- tons of fans of every other sport. Like, there's a 2K series with NBA. They got that on lock. And then there's Madden. And, like, 
it's really fun watching those videos of like guessing your ratings and having the players play it. But if the game isn't up to snuff, why buy it? And then that kind of loses fans and that loses, a, a, I'm assuming, a big market because there's a lot of people who play video games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the biggest markets in the world. Um, <laughs> like, I'm not joking. Like, it's a, it's a huge market. So many people play them. Um, like, there, if there's something wrong in, like, I think the biggest sports video game is still FIFA. Oh, and, yeah. Like, right. If there's anything going on in FIFA, trust me, EA hears about it, like, right away. Um, NHL is probably, I would say, third behind FIFA and Madden for EA sports games. Um, like, Madden's got a huge thing. Like, if there's anything wrong with these games, it gets back to the developer really quickly, but they don't really seem to improve anything. Like, I'm playing Madden a lot, and I feel that they've done a lot of improvements since the last time I played it, which was in 2013. So that was three years ago, I guess. Or, yeah, this is like four games from then, and they've done improvements. But the last time I played NHL was NHL 13 or 14. The change has actually not been that spectacular. So, Frank Shaw. Um, um, another thing I wanted to quickly mention was Down Goes Brown, um, guy who writes for Grantland, which I think is associated with um, ESPN, but I'm not her son sure, released his odds of the, all 30 NHL teams winning the Cup in the next five years. Cam, which two teams do you think cracked the top ten, and which team do you think didn't crack the top ten? Could, could you, okay, could you tell me that one more time, please? Okay, Down Goes Brown. Okay. You know who he is, right? Yes. Um, he wrote an article, wrote three articles, ranking all 30 teams in their probability of winning a cup over the next five years. Okay. First question I have for you is, what team do you think topped that list? As number one. Who to win the, the cup in right? the next five years? Mm-hmm. Top of that list. Top of that list. Okay, I, the way you're asking me, it's as if I should say Winnipeg. But no. top of the list in the next five years to win a cup? Yeah. The most cups or just a cup? A cup. Uh, Tampa Bay? Yeah. It's got to be. Really? Yeah, number two was Anaheim. Number three was Chicago, I believe. Come on, piss off, Chicago. Stop. Chicago, Jonathan Taze and the Chicago Blackhawks have lost me so much, like, Money, not even so much, just, I'm dumb when I make bets, okay? I bet against Jonathan Taves every time against my dad because he loves Jonathan Taves. I think he loves him more than me, to be honest. However, I last night I just paid off my final bet for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Actually, no, my second final bet. But with my dad, I had to, I got to go for wings with him and pay for the whole bill. That was fun. My dad's a big guy. He can eat way more than the 12 wings I ate. We still well, have to. Sure, Cam, don't make bad bets. We still so, have to buy Dan what, his food. Sorry, Greg, go ahead. Is, what other two teams were in that top ten list? Filthy Philadelphia. Come on now. Nope. Yes, you're lying to yourself. Philadelphia was not in that top ten list. They're actually in the bottom. Shut ten. up. Okay. Oh, fine. Fine. I'll make a. I'll make a guess. Uh, Winnipeg. No. They're not in the top ten. Which oh shit! Calgary, Calgary and Edmonton. Calgary and Edmonton. Bottom, well, it was in the middle tier. Okay, so there's, the Jets. there's one more team I have to guess for, right? What? There's I, one more one. I see yeah. it. Who's the other top 10 team that you wouldn't have expected to be in the top 10? Nope, I know, I know what it is. You're, you're trying to pull the wool over my eyes. It's Colorado because of their goaltending. No. Damn it. Uh, am I... The team we talked about on here not being very good. Maybe a team that didn't have goaltending last year. Shut the hell up. New Jurassic Park? No. Oh, didn't have good ending last year. Oh, Florida? No. Didn't have goaltending last year. Like, is yeah, that... you know, traded their goalies away at trade deadline because they were winning them games and they didn't want to win games. Oh, Buffalo! Yeah, which I don't agree with. I don't know. I don't think Buffalo is going to be that great in the next five years. Like, I, I don't see them winning a cup. That was the one where I kind of poked my nose up at. Because I was like, hey, you know, I don't know if Buffalo's that great. Like, 
yeah, sure, they got Ron O'Reilly, they got Jack Eichel. They're, they've made improvements. They have Evander Kane, who thinks he can score 50. Um, but they have Robin Lehner in net, a guy that's unproven. We're not sure if he's going to be good enough to win you know, consistently in the NHL. And they don't really have that deep of a prospect pool when you really think about it. I'm okay. All right. Okay. Well, they do have prospects, but they're not like super high end prospects. Basically, well, in the five years, though, that's not like Evander Kane in five years will be 28 or 29. So he's in like the almost past his prime at that point. Like he's in it. So you'd fully expect. And in five years from now, Jack Eichel's going to be 24, 25. So yeah. you got to expect that he's going to be in the prime of his career and pretty much all of their prospects now. So that's probably why. And the yeah. guys at the top already have amazing prospects. Yeah. Like Sam Reinhardt and those guys will be better. The reason um, that he put the Jets, I think, was it, was it 13th? So like middle of the pack to, to win a cup. His big reason was, um, yeah, you know, they have these prospects and yeah, the Hockey News has put them as champions for 2019. That's great and all, but he said, you know, are these guys, like, is their core right now good enough to win in the next five years? And are these guys, are these great prospects going to turn out? Because there's just a lot of what if or can they. There's no, you know, they will kind of mentality, right? Like, we're hoping Nick Patan turns out. We're hoping Nick Ehlers turns out. We're hoping that some of these guys become great. We're hoping that Connor Hellebuck is good, but we don't know. And that's that's the thing. Like we know what Tampa Bay is. We know that Tampa Bay is a really, really good hockey team. We know that Jack Eichel and Connor McDavid are going to come in and be studs in the NHL. You know, there's a lot of yes for sure's with these other teams. Where there's a lot of well, I don't know with. Um, with the Jets, and yeah, so that's kind of how I, I think. About I that. found all the articles. I will be tweeting them out. Uh, no, you made you raised great points too. Okay. And and um, did you want to hear the score that's in the game right now? There's five minutes left. The Jets are playing the Sens. I think it's was it like one nothing last time I checked. It is three to one for Ottawa. So if you're going to yeah. win a cup, you should probably be able to put more than a goal a game up because. Uh, let's add up all the goals the Jets have scored. This is game five preseason. They scored five, six. They've scored seven goals in five preseason games. And their opponents have put up four, eight, 16, 16, 19. It's, they're being outscored 19 to eight right now. Did they do that last year in the preseason? Yes. Like that's in the preseason. So, yeah, I think they're just showcasing a lot of their players, but Guys like Nikola Ehlers should be scoring. Like, if he's not scoring in the preseason, he's not going to score for you in the regular season. So, maybe it's time to send him back to junior. Or to Switzerland. Or wherever he goes. All right, Greg. Well, do you have any closing comments for uh, this this fine Two Dudes in Rooms podcast? <laughs> two Dudes in Rooms podcast. That's the title Tell of it today. Two, two Dudes in Rooms podcast. Um, we had a few questions, and we will get to them next podcast as we're going to answer all of the questions next podcast so don't worry if you posted something on our youtube video or put us up on twitter uh hit us up on twitter we got those questions and we'll answer them next week as we kind of want to do a whole fan part next week so um next week we will be recording speaking of that nikolai Lewis just scored to make it three two so that's a, the perfect way to end perfect so, Thanks, John. And uh, check us out on Twitter at, at Last Man NPC. Check us out on YouTube if you're listening to this on iTunes. Um, check us out on YouTube if you're listening to YouTube. Check us out on iTunes so you can take us on the go because we know how shitty the YouTube app is on iPhones because you can't have your phone on lock screen with the sound playing, which is stupid. Um, I want to live in a world where that's a possibility, but clearly we don't. Um, and any other questions, comments, or concerns, please go to either our email or onto YouTube or on our Twitter, and we will answer them or talk to them, talk to you about them on this podcast. So thank you again for listening. Thank you for making it 60 amazing episodes. And, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys next week. Excellent. All right. See you later, guys.